we're going to go ahead and get started. Can everybody in the room hear me? In the back? No, not too much. I'll move this up a little higher. All right, how about now? All right, I'll speak loud. All right, um, in this talk, we're going to be talking about Google Data Studio. Um, before we dive in, I want to find out, uh, kind of pull the room, who here has heard of Google Data Studio? OK, just a couple. Um, how about Google Analytics? Awesome. Everybody's pretty much heard of that. Um, how many of you are already using Google Analytics on your site? All right, about the same amount. Um, so first, uh, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Chris Edwards. Um, I'm from Orlando, Florida. Um, <clears throat> I've been a website developer for, uh, wow, 19 years. Um, starting to feel old <laughs> doing this. Um, started uh, back in high school. I uh, got my first professional gig when I was in uh, ninth grade. Um, granted, I wasn't charging enough. I think I built the website for somebody for like 300 bucks, uh, which probably today I would have charged three grand or more for that same site that I built then. Uh, but that's when I got my start and then just been really playing around with it my whole life. Um, I've been using WordPress for about seven years now. Uh, moved over, transitioned to it just because of it being a uh, great CMS to use and so forth. Now, I've been using Google Analytics. Um, how many of you know, uh, interesting fact, Google Analytics was actually Urchin Analytics originally. Um, all right, we've got some, so a few here who know that. Um, Google bought Urchin Analytics out uh, about, I think, 12 years ago or so. Uh, so I've been using it since it was Urchin Analytics. Um, and it's really been a great, it's always been one of the greatest platforms for tracking page view based analytics on your website. Uh, I've been a digital marketer for a very long time as well, doing SEO, PPC, those, type of, those types of things. And I've been a complete data nerd pretty much my entire life. Uh, I like to track everything and make graphs out of everything, uh, down to mileage of my car, uh, down to you know just anything I can find that, has, that I can attach numbers to. I like to analyze it and, and, and create data for it. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at Chris Edwards CE. Uh, I do post a lot of stuff about analytics, marketing, uh, and so forth on the Twitter account. So uh, you can follow me on there if you want to get uh, different information, different articles we write, and, and so forth. Um, oh, the other thing is, um, and I also have an uh, agency out of uh, Orlando called Data Driven Labs. We do analytics, SEO, uh, WordPress development. Uh, mostly digital marketing type of things. Um, so that's kind of what I do. Uh, now let's jump into why you all came here. So a lot of you, uh, or almost all of you, use Google Analytics or at least know what Google Analytics is. So what is Google Data Studio? Basically, Google Data Studio allows any of you to create amazing dashboards to analyze your different analytics. Um, so um, I was just speaking to somebody out in the halls earlier who uses Google Analytics, and they were telling me that they love looking at all their data, but it's all over the place. And one of the things that uh, you'll notice with Google Analytics is you have all this data, and very valuable data, in many different places inside of analytics, but sometimes you want to just be able to find that data and look at it right away. Uh, you want to be able to analyze certain key aspects all from one page without having to click around. Your clients may want to see only certain things. And just going through and trying to find all that it's very hard. So what many people have done is they've gone out, created spreadsheets, created different things, and pulled different data manually into all of these different places to send to their clients or send to their key stakeholders in their company to show the performance of their site. Data Studio basically allows it so that anyone can create dashboards and pull this information in automatically. And you can make really nice looking ones. Uh, this is an example. I'm actually going to give you the template to this at the end of uh, or somewhere in this talk, so you can actually download this template. It actually has five different pages, and I'll show it off to you guys. Uh, so you can actually take this. I have an e-commerce one and just a regular website one, so that if you have an e-commerce platform, you can use the one template. If you don't, you can just use the regular one. But it's going to allow you to use this for your site. You can actually make a copy and then change it how you like, change colors and all that. And we're going to talk about how to do all that in this talk. Uh, Data Studio is all drag and drop. So you're going to see it's really easy to create. If you all can use uh, Google Word, I know this is in the developer room, uh, but this is really basic. You don't have to know any code to do this. 
Um, if you can drag and drop inside of Microsoft Word or Google Docs, it's pretty much the same thing. So what Google Data Studio does is it allows you to collect or connect to a whole bunch of different data sources. So a lot of these data sources are things like Google Analytics, Google AdWords, Google Sheets, you can connect it to Google Search Console, YouTube, pretty much any of the Google products. Um, and you also can connect to CSV. Uh, so I do want to point out Google Sheets and CSV basically makes this a dashboarding system that you can use for any data you want. If you want to track the mileage of your car, you can put that into a Google Sheet and then create a dashboard based off of that information. Um, and I say that because we're going to talk about all the community connectors as well, but if your community connector is not already uh, out there, all you have to do is export it to CSV or uh, into Google Sheets, and you can build stuff with Google Dash, uh, Data Studio as well. Uh, other ones, there's community connectors. A lot of them are paid. Uh, you, have, you can connect to other sources, Facebook, Ads, Harvest, Stripe, LinkedIn ads, uh, all these different uh, types of systems out there. You can connect in and pull their data in and create dashboards off of this. Now, the interesting thing that we're going to talk about here, you can use multiple data sources inside of one dashboard. Uh, so what that means is we can have displayed over here on the one side of the site, we might be able to show off, uh, say, Google Analytics, so we can show how many page views there were. But over here, we can show how, how our AdWords are performing. And then down below, we can actually create something that shows how our Facebook ads are performing. So there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do. Google just launched, so it's not going to be in this talk. Um, about, a week, or about a week and a half ago, they just launched the ability to actually combine and cr uh, calculate those together, which is uh, more advanced. But you're able to actually take uh, Google Analytics and, say, Google AdWords and take parameters from both of those and combine them into one table, which is really cool. Um, but we're not going to get into that because that's a little more advanced. We're going to kind of keep it on the basic level to teach you how to use Google Data Studio today. So there's a lot of different type of dashboards you can create. Uh, just showing off here, you see there's a Google My Business one up there in the left-hand side, um, all the way over to the right, Google AdSense. And then you'll see there's a bunch of other ones in here as well. And you'll see how all these look different. You have the ability with Google Data Studio to really dive in there, customize everything, and make it look how you want. This is really great for your clients. You can create branding for either your company to provide dashboards to them, or you can actually make a dashboard to match their company. Uh, we do actually find sometimes clients want to put up a TV um, in their, uh, for their, mar their marketing offices may have a, a large TV or a large display that they want to have the dashboard displayed on. So you can actually brand it to fit their needs if you want to. Some other examples, this is a YouTube report. Uh, the one on the other right, I believe, is an analytics report. But again, you can see how you have a lot of customization really to make different colors. Um, and pull different data in. Uh, here's Google AdWords, Google Search Console. So this is really just showing you all the different things you can really build with these dashboards. So it's not going to be just your analytics dashboard. You can pull in all kinds of different data from all different data sources and really create a very unique uh, look for your company. You can also, these are pulling from Google Sheets right here. So this is what we were talking about before. This is just random data about world population, and TV ad performance. These are actually pulling from Google Sheets um, as their data source. Uh, and you can see how they were able to create really cool graphs just by putting their Google Sheets data in there. So if you just have a whole bunch of data from something else, you can pull that data in and create a really cool dashboard to help display that. Um, it's really great if you're trying to take a bunch of data and you're going to be doing a presentation uh, to board members. You can go and pull all that data in and show off just the items in a nice visual uh, looks instead of showing them a huge spreadsheet. So I want to show a quick example um, of what da the dashboards look like because there's some really cool things I can't show you with screenshots. So we're going to dive in real quick. We actually have decent uh, Wi-Fi here so I can do the live demo. Sometimes I have to skip this portion because it breaks, uh, but we can do it here today. So this is the uh, template I'm actually going to give you guys at the end of this talk so you can use this. This is an e-commerce template. Um, and you'll see we have all that information we just saw. But the cool thing is, as you hover over these, you have different information that pops up. So we can hover over here, see organic search, others. And you can see it's actually interactive. We can see the percentages here come down. You can see all the tables. These tables actually can scroll. So let's like look at here, age groups. You can scroll through this data. Here we can scroll down, and we can actually go to multiple pages. 
So there's a lot of really cool things that you can do. It makes it an interactive dashboard, not just a flat dashboard. The other thing you can do, this is what's really cool. You can actually change and affect the date ranges. You can put date range control filters in here. And so we can actually say that we want to do it, uh, we can pick our time here. We have presets, so if we want to do last uh, 28 days, and we can reset the data to be shown from the last 28 days. So this is really uh, great. What we do, I do this a lot with our PPC clients. Um, I don't, you, you have clients that when you're running certain campaigns that are gonna be calling you on a weekly basis, hey, I'm about to run into a meeting, um, I need to show what our performance was from this date to this date. And you're going, oh, okay, let me, let me try and get that together for you real quick and I'll send that over to you. And it can be really exhausting and also can take a lot of your time. By creating this, we create these for our um, PPC clients through a Google AdWords one. We give them this dashboard and they're able to go in and create their own uh, date ranges and then they can actually show in their meeting they're running into, they can pull that data themselves instead of us obviously having to try to build them something custom every single time they're going to a meeting. So it's a great way, um, it's a great way to help your clients see their data or help you see your data on your own website very easily. The other thing you can do is create pages. So you'll see we're on the overview page. I have acquisition channels. And we, on this one, we added a, a different thing. We added a filter uh, for changing the channel. So you see we have all these different channels. If we want to see just how organic search did, I can select organic search. And now all this data is just organic search based. Um, you can create these different filters for anything that's in here. We can say we want to see just organic search and direct traffic. So we can collect, connect, or, um, select those two. And then there we go. This is showing just those two channels inside of here. So you can really build out and put these filters. These filters could be anything. You can make this filter based off of demographic, male, female. Uh, you can make this based off of, obviously here we did channel base. Um, you can really pick different things that you want to build the filters for, and you can stack filters. Um, I don't have an example of a stack filtered one, but you could have multiple filters where we say we want to see by channel, and then we want to see by source and filter by source as well. So there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with those pieces. Um, again, we have the date range control filter over here. As it stands right now, they have not made it where if I select information inside here, that it carries over to the other pages. Everything's page specific. So we'd have to reset our date range here. I'm hoping that's something they do fix in a while, that this header could be overall for the whole, for all pages, but at this time, they currently don't. Google Data Studio is technically still in beta, so they are adding features left and right, and they're really working on this product a lot. Uh, another idea is to track your uh, e-commerce. So this is uh, the e-commerce page that we have set up here, and we can actually see this is the Google Store. This isn't my revenue. Um, I wish it was my revenue over the last uh, 28 days, but it's not. Um, this is, uh, you can see that we're able to build, I built over here, returning visitor versus new visitor. Um, and so that we can see average order value and transactions. Um, again, we're gonna give you this, uh, uh, I'm gonna give you this dashboard in this presentation so you can use this as a template to start. But we show top products, traffic and revenue trends. All this information is already inside of Google Analytics. All we're doing is pulling it into a more logical way for it to be displayed uh, and make it nice and visual so that you can find the information you want. Um, I'm sure you all have gone into analytics and tried to dive in and you'll know that all this stuff, you would have went to about four or five different pages in analytics to pull each one of these different pieces. It would have been really difficult to find that information. Technology, this is another uh, fun one I like to use, I like to give to all my clients. It actually helps uh, more with the development team to understand um, you know, how many people are using mobile, how many people are using desktop, helps you with design decisions and understanding when you're, uh, you know, what you're working with and so forth. And on this one, we actually pull the revenue and conversion rates for all of those different devices. So you can see that mobile has a horrible conversion rate compared, mobile and tablet have a horrible conversion rate compared to desktop. Um, if this was a client of mine, um, a, if Google wants to become a client of mine, I am open to bring that business in. But uh, <laughs> um, you'll, I, my advice to them would be, let's focus on our mobile version because that conversion rate is really low. Um, and that could be because the mobile experience and the purchasing experience on a mobile device is not very um, friendly. And that could be why the conversion rate's low. So this is, a great, this is a great tool. You can really get a lot of insight from these different dashboards. Um, and so forth. So this is this dashboard. I will give you a link to uh, get this dashboard when you actually open it. 
you'll have a button up here, uh, because it's mine, I don't have it. They'll say, uh, make a copy, or a copy. You'll click copy, um, actually right there, there it is. Um, you'll copy this report, so you'll hit this button, and you'll be able to copy this into your, uh, into your Data Studio account, which we're gonna walk through how to create one of those in just a second. And then you'll select your new data source, so it'll come over here with a blank, and you'll select your data source. We're gonna talk about how to connect data source as well, but you'll be able to put in your own data source and be able to use these different analytics for your site. All right, so let's jump back over to the presentation. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and let's talk about creating a report. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna log in and create a blank report. Uh, the way it works is if you have, it's going to use your analytics account that's attached to your Google account when you're using Data Studio. So if your analytics are all in account B, you need to sign in and create a Data Studio account with account B. Uh, so you're gonna sign in, this is your Google account. If you uh, are using the analytics, you already have a Google account, just use that account to log in. Um, and what, once you log in, it's gonna pop up and it's gonna ask you to create your first dashboard. There are a couple example dashboards you can pull in and take a look at too if you wanna kinda of play around in there. Uh, I'd always like to start with creating a, a new one. You can do also what we just talked about, making a copy of that, uh, once you create that account, you can make a copy of the dashboards that um, I'll give you guys a link to. And once you make that copy, you can just use those and manipulate those for your first dashboard and then worry about creating your new one down the road. So, I'm sorry, you're gonna click, uh, click on the uh, blank template. And then the first thing you wanna do, and I, and I, and I point this out, um, even though it seems like this would be a, a, a basic uh, step, you wanna name your report. And the reason I say name your report, uh, it names it as untitled report, and it doesn't prompt you, and it's actually a little bit hidden because it doesn't have, it doesn't pop up and ask you to edit it. It just dives you right in to start creating your report. And I often forget to do this step. And so my account, if you go into my account, I have about 30 untitled reports. <laughs> and I have no idea what they go to, and there's no little preview screen next to them. So I have to open each and every one of them to see what they are. Now you can rename them later, so it's not like it's gonna stay that way, but it is a little annoying when you uh, log in and see all those. So make sure you do name them. Um, unfortunately, there's not a folder system right now inside of Google Data Studio. Again, one of those things that we're hoping that they change uh, down the road. Right now, they just are all just listed. So what I, tell, what I like to tell you to do is come up with a naming convention. What I usually do is I do client name, um, dash, and then what kind of report it is. Um, and that allows me to go in and search because it's really, it's based off of last time viewed um, on the, inside the, uh, the report screen. And so what happens is you see all the previous ones viewed. So if you haven't looked at the report in two months, it can be buried and hard to find. So I always do it by client name so I can search easily and find that client's dashboard if I need to. And then once you're in there, uh, the first thing that's gonna have pop up is a little button down there that says, create a new data source. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that button to create ourselves a new data source. We're gonna go to Google, uh, th for this one, we're gonna select Google Analytics. You're gonna see a whole bunch of other data sources you can add. These are the default data sources that are built into Google Analytics. You can add any of those if you want. Uh, for this dashboard that we're gonna be building here, we're gonna talk about using Google Analytics just for the ease of it. Um, and I will actually give you guys an article. Uh, we did create an article that's a step-by-step, -step, like 5,000 words and tons of pictures. It's uh, more detailed than this of how to do this. So I'll provide that to you guys as well at the end of the slides here and you can follow that article if you get lost in this process here. Uh, once you do it, you're gonna need to authorize the account. Uh, this is basically just saying that you're allowing Google Data Studio to access the data inside of Google Analytics. Uh, any of the connectors you use, you're always gonna have to authorize your account to it. So once you do that, a pop-up will come up, just hit allow access. And then you're going to add your first data source. So the first thing we're gonna do, again, name the data source. Uh, it'll, de it'll put a default name in there. Uh, what'll happen is it puts Google Analytics as the name. Uh, what happens down the road is as you create more reports, all those data sources are saved inside of Google Data Studio. If you don't rename that, you're gonna have seven of them to just say Google Analytics. And you're gonna have to go back, like we talked again, you have to go through, and you have to select each one of those and actually connect it to try to figure out what Google Analytics account is actually attached to, and that's just no fun. So what we're gonna wanna do is uh, name this one. I'm naming this, this one demo. 
uh, Google Analytics because it's going to be our demo account. And then number two, this is where you select. So you select which analytics account you want. It'll have all of yours listed. I have a lot of them, but I picked the demo account, and you'll see that there. Once you select the demo account, it'll allow you to select which property. Uh, as you know, in Google Analytics, you can have 50, 50 properties under each account. Um, so if you have multiple properties under account, pick the property you're building this database for, or um, this uh, dashboard for. And then you go in and select uh, the view. So master view uh, is the one we selected on this because we want to pull the test view. Now, if you want to pull the test view for a maybe development dashboard, you can do that as well. And then you're going to hit add to report. You're going to get this screen here that allows you to do some edits and stuff. Ignore that. That's more advanced stuff. Everything's in there that you need. It's about 500 and no, 447. No, it's like 500. I forget with this one. There's a lot of tables in there. So if you want to scroll through and see all the metrics, it has the ability of pulling. You can, but there's a lot of stuff in there. I would just hit add to report and move on. And then you get to where you now get to build your dashboard. So we've connected our data source, which was our first thing we needed to do. So now the data source is connected. This is really the, easy, the, 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 uh, the best part about it. This is where you get, get to get creative. Uh, you can add graphs, charts, other elements. You'll see them all across the top. Uh, you can hover over each one of them. When you go to place them, it'll automatically pull what it thinks is going to be the best um, information to pull. So you can actually, if you want to see what each one of these look like, just drag and drop each one onto the screen and see what it looks like. And then you can manipulate the data, which we'll talk about in just a second. These are different types of charts. Uh, so you got a time series chart, uh, which is you know, a line chart, uh, bar chart, combo chart, pie chart. You can create a table, you can create a geo map. You can create scorecards. By the way, those are my favorite scorecards, um, just because they have the ability of comparing to previous data. And it just, I think they look really cool. Um, scatter chart, uh, bullet chart, area chart, pivot table. Uh, yes, you can do pivot tables inside of uh, Analytics or inside Data Studio as well. So you can pull a lot of different information in, which is really, really cool um, to build out your different, uh, different pieces of your dashboard. So in this case, we're going to do the time series, right? We take it, you literally drag a box about the size you want it to be. You can adjust, you can adjust the size down the road, so just drag out one that's about big enough for what you think it's going to be. Down the road when you're cleaning everything up, you're going to resize everything anyways. So go ahead and just drag and drop it in there. And like I said, it automatically in this one picked out a time dimension of date. Let's see, is my mouse showing up? Yeah. Uh, picks out time dimension of date and then the metric is sessions. So it automatically looked at it and said, most people who create these time series want to put sessions in here. So we're going to go ahead and use sessions as the default. But we do have that ability to change that. And I'll show you here that in just a second, right here. So that little side piece that uh, brought in allows us to pick what we want. So in this case, we want to go ahead and make sure that we do have the correct data source connect, uh, um, in there, which is the demo analytics one, because we named it so we could tell. The time dimension that we're going to do this based off of date. And then we have our metric. So we had sessions already on, in there, uh, which this, this particular graph, I wanted to have sessions. So that works. We'll leave that one on there. But then we hit add, we hit add metric, and we added page views so that we can actually see both of those on there, see uh, sessions and page views. We left everything else the same, but there are other elements you have the ability to mess with to really kind of uh, make your graph what you want it to be. So once we add those in, uh, you'll see over here, it's kind of hidden, but we have those two lines inside there showing those two different metrics. So we have everything we need. Um, and what I want to show you is we actually kind of advanced ahead on the slides just because of time, but the article um, I'll give you guys, I actually walk you through adding every single one of those elements so you can see how to add pie charts, but they all work very much the same. You drag and drop them on there, and then you select your data source, your dimensions, your metrics, and, and add those in, and then there's some, style, uh, some options to turn on and off for each one. So adding date range filters. Date range filters are along the top as well. That was that thing that we talked about in the beginning where you saw me changing the date. By default, you can set your report to be only for a certain amount of time or a certain date. What we want to do for this is we want to give people the ability to change the time and date that's uh, in that report. So you can go up here, select date range filter, and you just drag and drop it on there like any of the other graphs, bar charts, any of those others. Just drag and drop it onto the page, and there it is. 
Um, when you add that in, that gives you this ability to have this uh, item pop up that you saw me show off just, just a little bit ago. Uh, allows you to select the date range. You can actually set as the default uh, settings in there what you want the default date range to be. I often set it to be past 30 days because that's what most clients want. Uh, we do have some clients who say, I only want to see the past week, past seven days. Uh, whatever's, whatever they're, they want is their default. You can set the default over in that sidebar. You can set that default in there. It'll default to that date range and then can, they can still change the date range if they want. Um, if you are doing comparison elements, which uh, we talked about that little uh, graph cha uh, uh, percentage change that was on the bottom of the scorecards or any other ones that you're doing comparison metrics on, what you can do with those, um, those will always compare to the previous period. So if you set, select 45 days um, inside of here, if you do compare to previous period, you can compare to the previous year if you want. So it'll compare the same dates from the previous year, or you can compare to the previous 45 days. If you select 31 days, then it'll compare to the previous 31 days. So it basically, that's how the compare feature works. I like to bring that up because some people do ask questions about, well, what's it actually compared to? And when you're saying, in addition to the graphs and charts and everything, you have the ability of adding in things like text, uh, images. So this is where you can go in, add your own headers, because not all these will be labeled the way you want them to be. So you can go in, you can add your own text headers, add your own images, um, and put them into the report. You can even add shapes. That's how I get those like, nice little lines you see in there. And you can add colors and so forth. So styling. This is where you get to get creative. Um, the dashboards, when you're done with them, they're going to look really plain boring, um, and you really want to kind of spice it up to make it look really nice, um, especially if you're giving these to clients and so forth. You're going to want to make it look really nice to the clients. It gives you a more professional look. It pushes your brand, helps you with your branding as well. So go in there. Uh, you'll see on every single one of them, you have layout, or I'm sorry, on the main, on the main global styles, you have layout and you have uh, lay, uh, um, theme. So your layout is going to affect the actual layout of the dashboard itself. Uh, inside of there, you can actually select what size your dashboard is. So if you want to make it for a TV screen, you can do a 16 by 9. Uh, if you want to make it more of a uh, paper, you can make it, um, you know, a portrait size. You can really kind of affect whatever you want to make it, whatever size you want to make it. You can embed these uh, onto other websites in an iframe as well. So you can make it a certain size so it can be embedded on, an, on, on your website, or maybe if you create a plugin, you can actually maybe put this inside of someone's uh, WordPress dashboard if you want through a plugin. There's a lot of different things you can do on that side with embedding these reports. Uh, so you can affect the size that's down here in canvas size. Um, under layout and theme, you can actually pick the default. So when you're dropping those, those graphs on there, they're going to, by default, pull from the theme. Um, and then you can individually set the colors for those as well but it'll first pull from the theme if, no, if nothing's set. So this is where you can set your default colors, default fonts, all that, um, so that you can kind of change everything pretty quick. Then on each element, you're able to style each element. Um, and so what we did is we talked about all those different elements um, that you can bring on there. Each of those elements have sidebars that has a, a theme option. You can go in and you can, or I'm sorry, a style option. You can go in and style each one of those change the colors, you can make those work the way you want them to. So what does that do? When I created that one dashboard, when I was done just dropping everything on there and I didn't do any styling, it looked like this, which still looks kind of all right, but you see everything is kind of all over the place, colors don't really pop out, can't really tell. Just by doing a little bit of styling, I didn't change any of the elements or anything like that. We created that, which in my opinion looks a lot better. It brings over the branding of my, of my company which is what I was trying for on this one, and really just changes the look and makes it lot, uh, obviously a lot more professional. Doesn't look like you just threw something together. Uh, everything's lined up perfectly. Uh, it just looks really nice. Uh, it's appealing for, for others. So you can really have a lot of fun with the, with the styling. Uh, it makes your data pop out a lot more as well. You know, even with just adding the little dots on there, it made it a little easier for people to go, oh, I could hover over each of those pieces. So. You create this dashboard, looks great, but it's inside your Google account. So you have the ability now to share these reports with others. This works, um, who here has used Google Docs? Okay, 
So if you use Google Docs, Google Sheets, or any of those items, and you've ever shared this with people, you have ways to share them when you go up to the sharing area. This works the exact same thing. It actually runs off of Google Docs' sharing um, platform, I guess you would say. Um, but you have the ability to limit who can see this. You can either do it by where you invite certain people and they have to be logged into a Google account. Um, so we do this, we actually work with a large uh, medical um, or large hospital network. Um, obviously, their analytics it doesn't doesn't isn't uh, HIPAA, doesn't have to be HIPAA compliant, but obviously because they're a uh, for-profit hospital network, they don't want their competition seeing all their data, how much they're spending on ads or any of those dashboards. So we actually have it where we shared with Google accounts, they have to log in so that there's no way to get to it. But you can also make these available publicly, or you can make them av available where if anyone who has the link can view the dashboard. You also have the ability of making it where they can edit it. If they have a Google account, you can actually add other people to be able to edit the reports. Um, I do suggest you don't give edit capabilities if you're the one building the dashboard because people can get around there and start playing around and you've seen what happens when you let clients start playing around with stuff. You get something that looks nothing and then they want you. <laughs> they hire you and say, hey, can you fix this? I don't know what happened. And you're going, I know what happened. Um, <laughs> This, uh, it'll save you a lot of headaches if you just share uh, with just the view permissions. Um, what makes this great is you can give clients access to Google Analytics. You can try and give access to Google AdWords, give people the ability to see all this data. But what happens is there's so much stuff in there, they start playing around and then they start spending a lot of time asking you questions. Um, I had a lot of questions when I just give people access to Google Analytics. They'd log in, even though in Analytics you have the ability of creating Google Analytics dashboards, what I found is a lot of people would log into those and they'd come back and they'd be like, so I was in there and then I got lost and started playing with this. Can you tell me what this, this, and this means? And I'm like, it doesn't really mean anything for you. Um, that's, you're getting too deep. That's, that's beyond what you really should be diving into. But then they want to know everything and now you have an hour long phone call that you're spending with a client and depending on how your retainers are set up, that's money that's lost because after you tell them, they go, oh yeah, I don't need that. Well, that's why I didn't tell you to look at that in the beginning. So with dashboards, you can really show them what you want them to see. Um, not saying to be unethical here or anything like that. I'm just saying you can make it, you know your client, you know what data. What I usually do with my clients is I show them one of my example dashboards, and then I tell them, are there other metrics that you want to see? And I get them to tell me what they're looking for, what their marketing department wants, what every other person wants. And then what we do is we go in and we, um, build out that dashboard to fit their team's preferences of what they want. And if they want something different, we have them contact us and we add that piece in there. But that way, they're not sitting here trying to dig through there and try to find all this data, and you're not having to give them a bunch of access to all these other tools to see all this. You can literally, so, I mean, you're talking certain clients, if I'm running uh, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, if I'm running as well as you know Google AdWords, um, which is now Google Ads, by the way, they just changed their name last week. Um, and, and the whole interface, everything, it, it was a mess. They changed it in the middle of me working on something that was time sensitive. It was, it was really frustrating. <laughs> um, and it was like I got it in the halfway point of launch, so like half the stuff would tell me to go through this way, which didn't exist anymore, and the other, it, it was fun. I don't know why they don't make them at like midnight. They decide to make them in the middle of the business day. But uh, you may have all these different sources you don't want to try and get them set up to log in for each one of those and then them getting lost in each one. Then you have to do a training session on those. Just give them the dashboard and it pulls all that data in so they can see everything in just one spot. I do a quick training uh, with all my clients on here's how to use Google dashboards. Uh, here's how to change the, uh, the, the stuff. It takes about 15 minutes to show it to them and then I put all their data in there and then I don't have to teach them how to use Facebook Insights, which if any of you all have done Facebook ads, their reporting sucks. It's horrible. Um, and I, I can't even, it takes for me, forever for me to find the data I need. So by creating this dashboard, it makes it really easy because I can pull that data and just put it right there. I don't have to teach them how to dig deep inside there and find that. Half time they're looking at someone else's account anyways because Facebook's system's bad. Um, anyways, you have options with the sharing. Uh, you can share with anybody inside your uh, organization. Uh, you can share with um, it to be public on the web. Uh, if you're embedding it on your site, you would obviously want it to be public on the web so people can see it. Uh, a lot of different options you do with the sharing. All right.
This is where I give you links, so I'm going to leave this slide up there so you can find it. Um, everybody gets a dashboard that came here today, and you can share them with anyone else if you want. Um, go in, uh, if you go to this, these are short URLs, because the actual URL is just a bunch of letters and numbers. Um, if you go to ce2.io ga-ecom, that's going to be the one that's tailored for e-commerce. If you go to the other one, it's GA-only. If you don't have e uh, Google Analytics e-commerce tracking, because you're not an e-commerce site, or you're not using e-commerce, and if you're not using e-commerce, uh, you need to. Um, also set up advanced e-commerce, but I'll talk about that tomorrow in my Google Analytics talk that's at the end of the day. If you all want to stay, I would love it. <laughs> Come on out, and I'll show you how that works. But you can pull down both of these. I take down both links, because you never know when you're going to end up adding e-commerce or get a client with e-commerce. Um, and then just, like I said, go up and make a copy of it, uh, connect it to your data source, and then you're up and moving. Um, it's just got default colors on it, so just change the colors, change out the logo to be whatever you want, and you can actually use this for your own. It's that template that had those five, four or five different pages on there. Um, the Google Dash, Google Dash only one, uh, instead of using um, revenue based for everything, we use goals. So if you have goals set up, it'll pull all your goals in. Um, on that one page that was technically e-commerce and the other one, it's going to be, everything's going to be goals-based, so it'll show your goals, uh, conversion values and such. So feel free to grab those. Did everybody get time to copy those down? Awesome. If not, grab a picture real quick. The slides will be available later anyways. Um, I want to talk about community connectors. So we talked about all the Google connectors. Google makes this really easy to connect to their products. Google did something amazing, which is really nice. Uh, because everybody loved this, and everyone was like, this is awesome, but we use more than just your products. Uh, Facebook ads is a, is a key. Uh, so they opened it up so that you can actually create, because the way people were doing it was they saw that everybody was creating connectors to bring everything over into Google Sheets, and then they were taking Google Sheets data and using it, and so Google saw this opportunity to build this out and make it a little bit easier for that. So they created these things called community connectors. Um, this allows you developers to create these connectors that connect uh, other people's APIs straight into Google Data Studio so the data can be pulled in and you can actually view all of the data inside of there. Um, it works great for pulling all the information in. It's super easy for you guys to use. It is a pain in the butt if you're developing connectors, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, I pull a lot of hair out, that's why I'm losing hair probably, uh, trying to build connectors with it because things will work and then they stop working for a day and you're trying to figure out what you broke in your code when you haven't you know, committed any new code. And then a day later, everything's working again. So, gotta love Google. Uh, <laughs> and your documentation's not the best on the developer side. Um, but these are developed by third parties. Most of them are pay paid, so you do have to pay for a subscription to access these. Uh, some of the biggest uh, third-party connectors out there, uh, you have Supermetrics. They have like about 30-something connectors. Um, they have like Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, a uh, bunch of uh, marketing um, ad platforms that you're able to pull in. You have Funnel. This, they boast over 360 connectors. Um, they're a little more expensive, uh, and they have basically all, kind of, all kinds of MarTech products um, out there to connect to. And then you have, uh, we are actually working right now on launching one. Uh, it's in beta, private beta right now. Like I said, we're still working out some of the kinks. Um, but uh, we're, 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 we have it launching, and one of the things that we're doing with ours is we're focusing more on the WordPress side, uh, because I know there's a big uh, um, hole in that area to connect to WooCommerce, things like that, build like dashboards based off of those type of items. So we're working on building those. Uh, we're going to be launching soon, uh, so if you want to, you can go to that page and sign up for early access. I think there's like a coupon code that we have on the page uh, that will give you like discounts on a free year or something. But anyways, our goal is to focus on WordPress-based product products um, as well as some of the ad platforms. Uh, Funnel has a lot of just everything out there, and then Supermetrics has mostly the ad platforms. Uh, go take a look and see what connectors they all have and see what one works best for you. And that's, that's the biggest thing. Because um, you may find one has, uh, that one has all the connectors you need and the other doesn't. So double check those. Do you know if any of them have Twilio? Um, we're working on a connector for Twilio. Um, I think Funnel, I think Funnel might also have a connector for Twilio. I don't think Supermetrics, Supermetrics I think has it in their pipeline. Yeah, 
but they haven't launched it yet. Yes, sir? Funnel.io. Funnel.io, yes. And uh, Supermetrics is, I think, supermetrics.com. You can Google it and you'll find it. They're like the first thing that pops up. Um, I have all my slides available at that link. And then, as I said, this whole entire talk is based off of an article I wrote on um, our website that goes literally step by step through every single creation of every single one of those graphs. It's a very long article, but very detailed. You can follow it straight through. Uh, and we're actually going to be launching a YouTube video uh, showing um, the actual creation of this as well, hopefully here soon um, as well. And it'll be posted on that page when it's out there. Uh, this article actually, uh, funny enough, was picked up by uh, Google Analytics, tweeted it out out of nowhere, which was really cool. Uh, my site stayed up. Got a lot of traffic really fast. Uh, and then, funny enough, <laughs> my, my host is Flywheel. So uh, we stayed up and running. But, uh, and then not, about a month later after that, they put it in their main newsletter. So if you're actually signed up for Google Data Studio, it was listed in their main newsletter, which was really cool. I had no idea. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I look at my site, and my site was just blown. I had a bunch of alerts hit my phone. My site was blown up. I had 5,000 people on my site at once just looking. I'm like, I said, it came from an email, because I looked at the UTMs, and I'm like, it came from an email. I'm like, I don't send out emails. So who sent out an email? <laughs> and I was like, it had to be a big list. And sure enough, I was able to track it back and see it was put in their newsletter, which was kind of cool. Um, so check out that article. Uh, it does go step by step, so you should be able to go and follow through it. Um, I know this talk was kind of abbreviated, because we have a short amount of time. It takes probably about an hour and a half to really go through full step by step um, how to do it. So um, I am going to open the floor to questions. Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Um, as far as the default menus, if you do forget, can you go back and edit those names? Or do you have to just keep the names start over? The, I'm sorry, the names? The default, you said remember to name these? Yes, yes, you can change the names at any point in time. Second question, uh, can you do intro graphics, like have a little icon for 100,000 people sold or whatever and stack those up? You can, uh, as we talked about, you can drop text in there and talk, you can drop, uh, drop images in there. So yes, you could drop images in there to go with it. I have one that I did drop icons in, but you have to drop each one in. You can't associate and say, whenever this item pops up, put this icon in front of it. Yes, sir. Can you send it out? Can you have it scheduled to send out like Google Analytics does reports like once a month? Ah, the fun question. Uh, no, not right this second. You can't send it as an email. Um, you can set, like, uh, we actually, for ours, we actually have an automatic email template set up in our email program that sends them the same link every month because for some reason they, every month they seem to forget and they don't know how to search their email. <laughs> um, you know, you all, you all get it. Uh, <laughs> so we send it and also reminds them to go take a look. So you can do that. Um, the other thing you can do, you cannot <laughs> at this time, Stupidest thing ever. It's like one of the most highly requested features. You can't export it as a PDF right now, which, yeah, it's really frustrating because that's like everyone, that's like the most basic functionality. You can't, you can do a print, you can print the screen and then print the PDF, but it's still, it tries to print everything else around it because everything else, it's, it's frustrating. Uh, it is on, people have been requesting it. And like I said, they're really working hard to, this is one of the few products that Google actually seems to be paying attention to the community for and not just building whatever they want. Um, but people have been asking for the PDF functionality for a year now and they haven't built that. So I don't 100% know why that's not there, but hopefully that gets added soon. Um, there is, I did read that Google says they're working on some kind of email uh, reporting feature. So. Hopefully that comes out really soon. I believe it's supposed to, there's supposed to be something coming out. I think it's in beta right now, so there's something supposed to be coming out real soon for that. Uh, but none of us really know what it looks like. So uh, hopefully that maybe brings the PDF functionality or something. Would you say that if you're pulling data from a service a source like Facebook, you can't, that you have to go through one of those connector services? Yes, yes, you have to go through one of the connector services. Um, and unfortunately, in the Facebook ad side, uh, Supermetrics has a free version, but it only pulls the last 14 days under the free version, and you can't pull beyond that. So you do have to pay for them. Um, so you'll have to look at the different connectors. 
that are out there. Um, some range from, a, if you want just a single connector, uh, from $7 a month to, I think Supermetrics is $29 a month for a single. So you just gotta look at the different ones. There's like, it's like six different ones who have a Facebook ads one. So just look and see which one uh, fits your price range and stuff. But unfortunately, yes, the Facebook ad ones have to be um, purchased. Um, any other questions? In the back? So on the ones that are embedded, um, the data refreshes, don't quote me on this, every 30 minutes it was loaded. So if you put it on a high traffic site, obviously it's not gonna refresh every second you get a page load because it would overload Google servers. I think it it's every 30 minutes. On any of the other dashboards that are not embedded that are in there, you have a little refresh button that you can hit refresh if the data is old um, and force refresh it. Just on the embeds, you can't force refresh but it refreshes, I think it's like 30 minutes is the, the time frame there. So it's not like it'll show four day old data. And that's obviously done just to keep their service from overloading on a busy site. Does that include like goals? Because like Google Analytics reports 24 hours in the rear, goals, so you can't see goals. Google Analytics has gotten better at that. They're, they're, they're about at one to two hours I've noticed on goals. Yeah. Um, normally. Uh, on, a, on a new account, it's still like about 24 hours, but after your account's been established, um, it's been doing about one to two hours lately. Is my, But yes, it's, it, it pulls the data from Google Analytics. So if Google Analytics hasn't shown the data, it won't pull down into the uh, report. Any other questions? All right, I'll be over in the happiness bar sometime. I believe it's lunch now. So uh, I'll be in the happiness bar after lunch. Um, so if you have any other questions, come by. If you need to know more about analytics, I have a talk tomorrow, last talk of the day. I don't know what room it's in. Look at the schedule. Uh, and come by and we'll talk more about analytics. Thank you for coming.